Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Happy Friday to you. Uh, market took a little bit of a drop on us today, and hopefully that worked out for some of you, and hopefully those that it didn't work out for still managed out okay. Nothing big, just a little bit. Well, welcome to the Power Options and Radioactive Trading Open Discussion presentations. Uh, this is just a free open discussion. I don't have anything planned to present. I'm just going to sit back and field questions as they come in. Okay. Uh, my name is Michael Chupka. I'm the Director of Options Education here at Power Options. Uh, at some time during this uh, presentation, we might be joined by Ernie Zarenner. We may not. Um, it depends on the flow of questions that are coming in. Okay. Um, processes and procedures, let's just touch a little bit about what we're going to do here today. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, ask you to use the question pod to pose a question over on the uh, right-hand side, the technology that we're using today, the Citrix technology. Uh, simply post your questions, and uh, I'll go ahead and answer them as best as I can. They can be about the tools on power options. They can be about some of the concepts on radioactive trading. They can be in regards to our sister site, Power Options Applied, or they can even be just general options questions. Um, and what I'll do, if it's just a general options question, is I'll still use the Power Options tools to help myself answer the question, both uh, graphically and verbally. Um, but yeah, just pose any questions that you have about options trading and uh, or any of the services that we offer. Um, we're not going to be able to do the microphone unmuting today. Uh, sometimes if you have a microphone, we'll be, you can request to be unmuted and we'll allow you to verbalize it. We're not going to do that this afternoon. Um, Ask as many questions as you want. You may not have time to answer all the questions, of course, but we're going to try to get through them as best as possible. Oops. Some of the basic ground rules. Uh, we just ask you to uh, have respect for everyone else. Um, we get negative behavior, of course. We may ask you to uh, uh, just curb that a little bit. Um, be patient. There may be several questions ahead of yours. We'll try to get through them all. And of course, feel free to help us help others. If I'm in the midst of answering a question and you have a point that you want to make, about an experience that you had with your previous trading or any information that you came across in your past experiences, just let us know and we can relate that to the audience as well. Okay? Most important, and let's just have fun. All right? So, without any further ado, let me just go ahead and open up the main Power Options page. This is the normal page that you see when you log on to your Power Options account. What I have set up here, of course, is we're looking at the top. You'll notice that I just have the four spread positions set up. Uh, this was for our introduction to the vertical spreads presentation that was hosted last night. That should be posted in the webinar archive section sometime early next week. If you want to look at any of the past webinars, look at any of the past recordings, uh, simply just go into the Learning Center there under the main Home tab menu. Go ahead and click on Webinars. And they're arranged by category. So we have some on the Power Options Tools Archive, some on Basic or General Options Strategies Introduction. Um, last week we finished off our discussion on collars. Two weeks ago we had the introduction to collars presentation and uh, last week what we did is part two of that segment where we discussed some of the management techniques and the use of the Power Options portfolio tools to help you with the management. And uh, of course as I mentioned this past week, yesterday, last night, Thursday evening, we reviewed the introduction to vertical spreads and that will be posted in the archive here, the vertical spreads one later on. Um, we also have recorded the last couple open discussions archive as well. And again, I mentioned our sister sites, there are some archives for radioactive trading and for power options applied. So this webinar link in the Learning Seminar, the webinar page, is a good place to get started for various information. All right, the field is opened. Um, fire away. Send any questions over that you have. Again, it could be anything about the Power Options tools, um, about our sister site, Power Options Applied, which is an advisory newsletter service. They make selections for iron condor positions and covered calls. There's about four trade folios, portfolios that are listed on Power Options Applied. You can also ask questions about radioactive trading. Uh, for those of you that are not familiar with radioactive trading, that is a conservative full trading methodology. Uh, described in what's called the blueprint that was written by Kurt Frankenberg. He created this uh, radioactive trading method about 2000, 2001 to start trading his own account. Um, radioactive trading also offers another service called Fission where you can look over Kurt's shoulder and follow along 
with his trades that he makes. All right, so a variety of services offered here in the Power Financial Group family. I'm just showing the Power Options page right now. So you can ask any questions about any of the option strategies or about any of the other services that we offer as well. So go ahead and send in your questions. While you're doing that, I'm going to go into the Other Strategies tab here at Power Options. And to start, I'm just going to go ahead and reset to my default settings. Um, if you're on a 14-day free trial, for example, this is the general setup that you'll see for these strategies um, when you first log on to your account. But we do support over 23 different option strategies on Power Options. So just keep in mind that at any time you can switch out which uh, positions you don't want. For example, if you don't do long calls or if you don't typically trade bear call credit spreads, you can just remove those and add any one of the other spreads, any one of the other positions, I should say, strategies over on the left-hand side from our available strategy menu. All right. So again, I'm just going to pose the question. Oops. Remember, I don't have, ah, I'm sorry, I don't have a set plan on what to teach or what to go through. Um, my job today is just to sit back, let the questions roll in, and as you can probably tell so far, I don't have any questions. So if you have a question on any of the services, again, Power Options, Power Options Applied, Radioactive Trading, you have a question about the tools in general, you have a question about the strategies in general, you just have a general options question. Um, if you have a questions about maybe entering a trade with your broker, hey, just go ahead and send them my way. Um, you know, naturally, if we don't get any questions coming in, then we'll just end early. So I haven't seen any questions come in, so I'm just going to encourage everyone again to send in any questions that you have. And uh, basic, I'll just go through a basic overview while I'm waiting. Uh, the different levels of service here, Power Options, this is what we're looking at right now. Power Options is a patented suite of search and analysis tools that are designed for self-directed options investors. Using these patented tools, you can search and scan across the entire universe of options to find only those positions that match your specific risk reward tolerance. We support over 23 different strategies. Once you've identified those positions, you can then use the quick links, the more information buttons to further research and analyze the stock or the options in the particular strategy that you're using. Um, in addition to that, you can also run what-if scenarios linking to the profit and loss chart to help you analyze what your position that you're thinking about trading might look like if the stock had a sudden move in one direction or the other. And then you can run your analysis and your what-if scenarios. One of the most powerful features, of course, on Power Options is after I've entered a trade, I can link the trade into the Power Options portfolio tool. This allows me to track my positions. Um, so it not only shows me a breakdown of what my current liquidation value is compared to my future expiration value, I can also then, from the portfolio pages, from the positions that I'm tracking or managing in my own account, I can link directly to an analysis page which will show me potential rollout opportunities, and then I can analyze those positions, simulate the rollout opportunities before actually placing the trade. So I can get a numerical and graphical view of what that position might look like before I actually make the trade. So I know exactly what my rollout opportunity would be before I place a trade. Okay. Let's see here. Okay, Joseph asks, could you go through setting up and tracking a portfolio? Okay, sure. Well, there's two ways to do this, okay? Now, I have several portfolios already created, but let's say that right now I'm interested in entering, I'm just, let's just say I'm interested in entering some bull put credit spreads, okay? So if I'm just creating a portfolio where I want to track a specific strategy, I'm just learning bull put, so I want to see how they work, I'm going to paper trade it, the first thing I'll do is I'll go into my portfolio, Okay, I can link to the various tools. The profit and loss portfolio, this shows me my current open positions. The historical reports, this gives me a breakdown of any of the past transactions I've made. The analysis shows me the full amount of positions I've traded, both historical and open on one stock. Um, but what I'll do first, maybe I'll go into setup. Okay, And let's say I'm going to adjust a position. I'm going to start a portfolio here. I'll create a new portfolio called bull put. 
and I'm just going to put in a basic starting amount of $50,000. This is going to be a paper trading account. We'll create it on 1023. Okay, so I'll go ahead and hit submit changes. Okay, just if you wanted to know about naked puts and calls, that's fine. Um, I can put in any position, but let's just say I called this naked calls or naked puts before I did that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is let's say I'm going to enter a few new trades into this new bull put credit spread, even though it's called bull put. Well, I'll go into the naked put screen now and go into search. Okay, so if I'm running a search, I've created, put, changed my criteria, ran my search, found positions that I like. Maybe I'll go into the sample searches first, and let's just say I pull up the five-star naked put preset search, okay? I have my list of results. I can make adjustments to the criteria down below to find only those positions that match what I want to see. Now, once I've identified a position, I'll use the More Information button over here on the left-hand side. This will allow me to go to the stock chart. I can look at the one-year snapshot or big charts company information, I want to do further research and analysis, I can look at the full option detail or the full stock detail, and of course then I can use the profit and loss chart. But let's say I was going to add this position now to my portfolio, I'm just going to select add to portfolio, and it gives me a list of potential portfolios that I've created that I could put this in. And for now I'm going to go ahead and put it in bull put credit, and I'll click insert. Okay, here it shows me which one I'm putting this naked put position in, and my cash on hand at the top shows me how much money I have remaining in this account. So let's say I was going to just do 10 contracts of this particular put. Put in a cost basis of $5.95. Stock price at time of trade, I'm not going to worry about that right now. I can put that in later if I want to, or I can just leave it blank. And then I'll go ahead and hit submit. Now once I've entered the position into the portfolio, we are now going to see where it stands. Okay, so here's a December 11 put. Uh, the stock's currently 11.63, so we sold the 11 put for 85 cents. Now, right now, it does show me that I have a loss on the position, and the reason why is because the bid ask spread. I simply just entered this position on the, <coughs> excuse me, the natural bid price of 85 cents. But right now, the natural ask price is 95 cents. So this is why we're showing over here in our gain and loss columns we have a 20 cent loss and a uh, total loss of $1.06. Well, that's not $0.20, cents, is it? That's only $0.15 cent, or $0.10. Cents. Well, that other $0.20 cents is showing. I'm sorry, that's the change today. I apologize. This 106 gain, I just wanted to point out, that includes our commissions. Okay, so we had a $5.95 commission. Remember, when we entered that. We collected an $0.85 cent premium. The buyback cost, if we liquidated this position, is currently $0.95. Cents. Okay, so we have a $0.10 cent loss due to the natural bid ask, and then that would be $100 for our 10 contracts, and that extra $6 that's shown in the loss column there, that's because of our commissions. Now, over here on the right, what I always do, not everyone likes to do this, uh, it extends the view a little bit, but what I do in all my portfolios is I have this box checked here for view position analysis. And what that does is it adds these five extra columns for me. Now, for a naked put or a naked call position, this might not be uh, as meaningful, but what it shows me now is that here's that current loss again. It includes an extra $6. See, I have a, lo a listed loss right now of 106. Again, that's the 10 cents times the contracts plus the $6 commission I paid to enter the position. My liquidation gain or loss right now shows me a loss of $112. Well, that's if I did buy the put back right now for $0.95, cents, I'd have to pay another $5.95 commission. So there's my loss of $112 or 1% 1 um, of the total value. Okay. Now, if I held it to expiration, this expiration value over on the right here is not projecting that this is what's going to happen at expiration. I'm going to make full profit. What it's doing is saying this is what's going to happen if the stock remains at the same price it is right now. If the stock remained at 1163, our 11 short put would expire worthless. Okay, so we'd make the full 844 dollars again. That's the 85 cents we collected minus the six dollar commission, or 7.7 percent return. Now, another feature that's shown for naked call and naked put writers is under here, near the bottom of your 
portfolio summary where you have the total market value, your cash on hand, uh, the total value. So your current return right now, it's showing a loss because we just opened the position and we technically have a loss between the bid and the ask spread if we liquidate it right now. Mm. But we're also shown our cash secured put obligation would be $11,000. So if I was totally cash secured on this position, um, this would just give me the, uh, that value. Okay? And I'd need $11,000 to cover that. Um, Joseph, I'm just trying to look at your questions as you come in. Um, the general just information about the price of the current price of the option, the number of contracts, uh, what you received when you paid for it, that's all that the exports to Excel. It's just giving you the basic information on your positions to use as a backup for your portfolio uh, just in case you accidentally delete something. So it's not giving you any other information that you see here. It's just the basic information on the trade if I click the export to Excel button. It's just to be a backup in case you accidentally delete something on your portfolio. You can go back to an old Excel spreadsheet you might have and see what the position was when you originally entered it. Okay. Now some of the features that we want to use in their portfolio aren't going to be available right now because we just opened this position. Doesn't make any sense for me to do any kind of uh, position analysis or any rollout since I just opened this up. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to showcase another feature I'm going to go into, I'm going to, this is going to do two things for us. I'm going to show you how to enter a position manually um, from this bold put credit spread, which we're actually going to do a naked put uh, portfolio on. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into the naked put screen, okay, and I'm going to go into the back test. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Smart History Excel. This is the back testing tool for the historical suite of tools. And I'm going to select the screen for naked puts that we're trading, let's say, hmm, I'm going to look for ones that were at the end of September. Okay, so let's just select September 30th. So I'm going to act as though I was creating a default search, um, and I'll just use the initial value set on September 30th. So what would we have seen in the naked put screen at close of business on September 30th? Okay, all right, well, here we have a listing of the potential November options that would have matched that basic search. Now I can change the criteria as well. Um, this is the default search that's looking for options that were least 8% out of the money, had a naked yield of at least 1%, uh, some listed previous option volume, stock price between 5 and 100 and so forth. Over on the right hand side we do have some basic stock fundamentals. But these are the results that would have shown if we had ran this search on September 30th. I'm also going to make some changes here. I'm just going to click to see. I didn't want to see positions that had an earnings date between now and expiration. Okay. And once I've made that change, let me go ahead and hit submit. Let's see if that adjusts our results any. Yeah, did pretty good, didn't it? All right. So I'm looking at the positions now. And what I'm going to do is I can't add a previous position in the smart history to the portfolio. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to jot down the two positions that uh, jumped out at me right away. I'll, I'll write down three positions. Why not? Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take these three positions here. It won't take us that long to enter. Okay. So the first naked put, we're going to sell the RC LWY November 22 put on Royal Caribbean for $1.30. We're also going to look at the SWI WD, which was trading. It's the November 20 put on Solar Winds, which was trading at 110, a dollar 10 premium, on November. I'm sorry, on September 30th. Okay, and why not HMYWB, Harmony Gold here. HMYWB for 50 cents. Seems a little bit low, but hey, I'll take it. All right, so those are the three positions. And what I'm going to do, I just looked at these the three positions near the top. I'm going to go back into my portfolio. I'm going to go into the profit and loss portfolios. Remember, this is what tracks our open positions. Okay, and what I'm going to do is instead of that easy link we used before where I just click the more information button from a current search, and linked to add to portfolio. 
I'm going to enter these as naked puts, or what's called in this field here, this drop-down menu, short puts. I'm going to enter those naked puts into the screen. Okay, so once I do that, it pulls up the information. Let's see, we first had RCLWY. This was the November 22 uh, put, excuse me, on Royal Caribbean. Number of commission or contracts, I'm just going to put in five. Commission fee, let's just put in $5.95 again. The price was $1.30. Remember, though, I want to change my date. I entered this on 9 30, 2009. And I could put in a stock price at the time of trade. Uh, I didn't really look that up when we were on the other page, but let's just say the stock was trading at $23. Okay? So I changed the information, put in the number of contracts, my commission, the price I would have received, and I put in that different date, and now I'll hit Submit. Okay? All right, so there's our original position. Looks like Royal Caribbean is currently trading at $22.50. We originally sold this put option on November. September 30th for $1.30. Right now it's priced at $1.15, so we've made 15 cents on it so far. Not really gangbusters, but it's something. Okay, let me put in those other couple ones as well real quick, just so we have some comparisons there. Our second symbol was SWIWD for the put option. I'll put in five contracts again. Let's change our level to 930. Commission fee of 595. Price we received on this particular one was $1.10. I'm not going to worry about the stock price at the time of trade. Let me just go ahead and hit submit. I'm also going to check my total potential cash secured amount, okay? Because I started this portfolio, remember, with fifty grand, fifty thousand dollars So I've used up $32,000. I still have $18,000 left if I'm going to go place my next trade. That's something to keep important, so I'll go do that now. That last put, we're going to go ahead and put that in. Remember, I'm selecting short put again. This was the Harmony Gold HMYWB. Let's just keep it at five contracts. Why not? 9.30 for the transaction date, September 30th. The commission of 5.95. And we only got 50 cents for this particular position. All right, there we go. All right, so. There we have um, our entries. You see here there is an effective cost per share field, but uh, we haven't made any adjustments to these positions, so we don't have anything to adjust. It looks like the one that we've actually, the, uh, the SWID position, check that one out. That one actually went below our strike price. Here we're shown that SWI is now trading at $19.84. We had sold the November 20 put. We had originally received $1.10. So now we're up to 120. So this is something we might want to take action on because the position has dropped below our cost basis or below our strike price. Okay? So if I'm going to do action on this portfolio right now, I'm going to do action on this position. I'm going to go ahead and click that more information button. I'm going to go to position actions now and then position analysis. All right, so now we're going to scroll down. This is giving me a breakdown of our original position in the analysis field. We have the time value left in the price. I typically won't roll until I have a lower value. I'd want that to be below 1% perhaps, but maybe I am concerned that the stock's now trading below my strike price. I have 29 days remaining to expiration. The next field gives us the description or the... Uh, Values here, we have our current liquidation value. If we close the position right now, we have a 0.6% loss. If we left the position open to expiration and the stock stayed at the same price, which is below our strike price right now, we'd have a loss of about 4, or a gain, I'm sorry, of about 4.6%. Not the full gain that we expected, but we'd still have a decent return. But now I'm shown the rollout opportunities for this position. If I maybe wanted to stay in November, Okay, I see what it did. What we're looking at now, it's not showing me rollouts for the put itself. It's not showing me adjustments for rolling the put. This first one here is showing me that if I let the position get put to me, because it's trading below the strike price, that I could potentially turn it into a covered call position. Now, I can't force it being put to me. This is just assuming that I was closer to expiration and then I was going to make a management there. Okay, so this is showing me now that here's the call symbol. If I got the stock put to me, I could potentially sell the November 17 and a half call for 250 
which would give me a potential return of about 6.7%. And I have about an 83% chance that would be assigned. If I was to stay with the November 20, I could receive a higher percent if assigned, but I have a much lower probability of it getting assigned. So if I'm going to see this in comparison before making an adjustment, I'll click the More Information button next to the Rollout Opportunities, and I'll go to Simulate Trade New. Okay? And what I'm shown here, is this might not make a lot of sense, but again, we still have 29 days to expiration, and the stock just went below our strike price. Well, what we're shown is over here in the red corner, this is our original naked put position. What our current percentage return is, remember it was minus 0.6%, and then the max return, if the stock stayed above 20, would be 5.8%. Okay? And over here on the right, we've shown the new values. If the stock, uh, if we perform this rollout opportunity, so we see we get a much lower percentage return, but we have a higher probability. So we would move from our 20 strike put, which is right here. We'd buy to close our 20 strike put, and then sell to open, I'm sorry, we would, if we got assigned, this is assuming assignment on the put, we'd buy, have the stock at 20, lowered by the original premium we received, and if we sold this new call, the blue line here shows us the, uh, <coughs> what the position would look like, okay? Let's see here, let me do that, and switch off here, there we go. So, I particularly wouldn't do this particular rollout, it doesn't make sense, but you can highlight and look at it, there's your current position, and here's where the new position would stand if you got assigned and then try to sell the 17 and a half call for the premium that's listed right now. A lot of times when you're analyzing a naked call or naked put, it will also show you the rollouts for just buying the put back and then selling uh, a new put against it. This one particularly didn't have those uh, ones come up because it's below the price and uh, it's possible it couldn't record or calculate a positive return. Okay. All right, Joseph has another question. Is there a way to compare a naked put to a cover call to a married put to a collar for all the same symbol? Um, there are manual ways around it, but short answer is no. There is no way to do that directly. But let's say I was analyzing this November 20 naked put. What I would want to do now is go to the, this is the position that, uh, let me take the position we just entered, okay? Here is that one, the December 11 put that we sold from the results. Instead of going to the position analysis, I'm going to go ahead and go to the profit and loss chart which links me into the custom spread tool. Okay, so here's the breakdown of that position we looked at first, that very first naked put position on uh, Manitoba Company. Uh, we sold the 11 put, 11 strike put for around 85 cents. Okay, and here's our standard profit and loss chart. Now, if I want to compare this to the covered call, you know, the parity trade, which would be the uh, the 11 strike call, what I'm going to look at here is, here's my total value again, I'm sorry, the percentage return for this naked put would be 8.3% based on the strike price and the total monetary amount that we would need to be cash secured, okay? And of course our maximum risk here is $10,156. All right, so let's quickly compare it now to the covered call position. Let's go back up to the top. I'm going to clear out the 10 contracts of the put option, okay? And I'm going to put in the stock symbol here in this first line, MTW. I'm going to do the action of buy. We were doing 10 contracts of the put, so I want to do 1,000 contracts of the stock, which is currently trading at 11.63, okay? So that's what I'm going to put into my price field. All right, now to compare it to the parity trade, get rid of that. We're talking about the December option, remember? So I'm going to take a look at December. Um, here's the 11 call at $1.45. Looks like a higher premium, but remember we're 63 cents below the current stock price. So we're in the money by about 63 cents. Let me click MTWLV. That now added it into the second line. Remember, I'm going to compare the naked put to a covered call. So I have to change my action to sell. I'm going to put in 10 contracts. I'm going to put in the natural bid price of $1.45 because we did use the natural bid price for the put of 85 cents. So to be fair, let's keep it natural, put in the natural bid price, and I just hit submit down here at the bottom. Now we're going to be able to take a look at the profit and loss chart for our covered call position. Okay? Here we see that the potential maximum risk, this is of course assuming the stock went to zero, was $10,180. Okay, so 
Remember our first maximum risk was 10,156, so we have about a $40 less risk here. And the maximum return on the covered call position is 8.1% or uh, $820 monetary profit. With the naked put position, we had an 8.3% and what was about an, uh, I believe it was $830 or $840 potential maximum profit. Okay, so there's my comparison of the naked put uh, to the covered call. Now, analyzing a married put, married put is not really at a parity trade to these two positions, the naked put and the covered call. So let's just do a sort of radioactive married put from scratch, okay? I'm going to use my symbol again of MTW. We're going to buy again. I'm going to use 1,000 shares. I'm going to keep it even. And, uh, oh, the stock price at 11.63. Now, with the radioactive trading method, we all know as a default, we, wants to go, we want to go at least 150 days out in time. We want to look for a risk that's usually less than 9%, 7% or so. Now, I don't have the calculations in front of me, but I'm just going to grab one of the June put options. It's in the money by a couple strikes here. Um, that would be too high of a risk. That would be too high of a risk. Oof. This one might work. Okay, so I'm going to choose the 15 strike put, the in the money put here. Uh, it's probably deeper in the money than I'd like to go. It's probably more than 20% in the money, but that's okay. Um, and I'll go ahead and put in uh, 10 contracts, and I'm going to use the natural ask price for the put of 490. Joseph, you'd use March. Um, that's okay. What I'm doing is just trying to follow the rules. It's 148 days to March expiration that was shown uh, on that chart, let me scroll back up to the top. It was 148 days. Uh, I'm just trying to follow Kurt's rules. If I don't follow Kurt's rules, he yells at me. So uh, <laughs> um, I have to be at least 150 days out of time. So I'm going to use the June option. That's 293 days out. Okay. Uh, but yes, you can use March. Hey, you could use January if you're more aggressive. That's uh, up to your trading method and what you think is going to happen with the position. All right. Well, I'm gonna, let me take a look at my married put here. All right, how much risk did Mike take? Mike took on a 9.3% maximum risk, which is well beyond my limit. My limit, by the way, is usually only 7%. When I enter a radioactive trade, I don't take more than a 7% risk, okay? But we see my monetary maximum risk is $1,530, uh, and I've got about uh, $16,530 into the position, but I'm guaranteed to get back 15000 um, I do have, of course, with the married put, we all know we have that infinite maximum profit potential. Let's take a look at that profit and loss chart, and there we go. Okay, now, here's a married put position. Now, Joseph, once you've been, what I always do, by the way, is I, I've had this, uh, I've had this idea, or I had, I played around with, those of you who are familiar with the radioactive trading method, I should say know that what we do is we open the married put first, we wait for the stock to move, and then we apply one of the 10 various income methods that are discussed in the blueprint. Okay, that's Kurt's full trading methodology. But some people do jump the gun. I've even done it myself. We want to look at the potential of selling an out-of-the-money call, let's say, for November right now against this position. Well, let's see what would happen if I did that. Here's my married put with my June 15 strike put. Unlimited profit potential. If the stock really ramps up, I'm only risking 9.3%. Using the simple custom spread builder here, I'm going to go ahead and click the view options field. I'm going to select the November chain. Uh, stocks at 1163, let's say I'm going to be very, very bold, and very, very aggressive, which you should never do, but I'm going to do it to illustrate the example. Let's say I'm going to sell the 12 call right now for 65 cents. Okay, I'm going to click, remember, the symbol right there in the chain. It populates it for me automatically in that symbol field. I'm selling the call, so I want to change the action. I'm going to change that to sell. Keep the same contracts, of course. I'm going to do 10 contracts. And I'm going to leave the, the field blank because when I hit submit, if it's reading that I'm selling the call, if it's reading that I'm buying the put, the, the system here, the custom spread tool, is automatically going to grab the natural bid if I'm selling and then put in the natural ask if I'm buying. All right. So let me go ahead and hit submit there. All right. So there's our 65 cents. Let's take a look at what we've done to this position. Ugh, that's ugly, isn't it? A very small window of potential profit. 
will make about $290 or 1.8% if the stock's trading right at $12 at expiration, or 12 and a half at expiration, excuse me. But what have we done here? We've increased our risk, and this is what throws a lot of people off who trade radioactively. A lot of people think that when I have a married put position and I sell a call against it, that I'm automatically limiting my risk. Well, you're right. You're limited your risk on the downside. Sure, it moved up the downside risk originally, remember we saw was at $1,500 with just the straight married put. So we would have been about here, well, let me, let me erase that and do that over again. Let me just show you what the original, I'll try to draw a very swarthy, lack of a better term, looking married put profit and loss chart. Here would have been our original, whoops, married put profit and loss chart. Okay, we would have looked at something like that. Okay without the curly cue here there. Sorry about that. Actually, I slipped. <laughs> anyway, this, oh, it erased for me. Hold on one second. I'm going to redraw it again. Let's see if we get a little bit better one. Anyway, you remembered what it looked like. Here's our sort of original married put that we had, okay? So there's the original married put. This is what we did by creating a collar. So yes, we lowered our maximum risk on the downside. We moved up from a maximum risk of about 1,500 up to about eh, about 900, oh, I'm sorry, about yeah, 980 or some on the downside. What happens though is that you see here we've got a maximum risk now of 24.4%. How is that possible? Well, it's because it's the upside. If the stock really takes off and goes up, remember we obligated ourselves to deliver shares of stock at 1250. As the stock goes up to 17, goes up to 20, maybe it goes up to 22 and a half, we get assigned at 12 and a half. We don't take any advantage of this upward movement, and that original put we bought is just decaying and decaying and decaying. So yes, when you collected a premium, you lowered your maximum risk on your downside, but in this case, we almost, we more than doubled it on the upside. If the stock goes in the direction we originally wanted, because we were entering a bullish position, we doubled our risk on the upside. This is why it's very dangerous to a, sell a call right away when you first open a married put position in this style, in the radioactive trading methodology, and B, selling a call below the put strike price. When you do that, this is what happens. You end up turning this into, uh, for those of you who are uh, experienced traders who have been trading other spreads, you'll recognize the profit and loss chart that we're looking at right now once we added the collar. This is sort of a synthetic diagonal calendar call profit and loss chart and not a very good one at that. You just greatly limit your potential profit. Sure, we collected 60 cents against our initial maximum risk, or 65 cents in this case, against our initial maximum risk. We've got ourselves into a lot of trouble if the stock really moves up. Okay? All right. So, Joseph, this is the tool that I'm going to use, this custom spread tool. If I've found a naked put position that matches what I want to see, I'll link to the profit and loss chart, I'll take out the naked put screen, and then I'll go ahead and add the covered call position manually to see what it would look like. If I'm looking at a married put and I want to see what would happen if I sold a call against it, that's what it would look like. Now, in addition to that, a feature, Joseph, you're really going to like, which uh, the programmers and I are going to probably put out within the next couple of months, is when you've run a search and you've found a naked put trade, for example, when you use that more information button, there's going to be a link there uh, for what's called parity trade. When you click on that link, it's going to link you over to another page, which will show you the comparison of the naked put to its parity covered call. If I'm looking at a bull put credit spread, for example, it would show me the parity trade of the uh, bull call debit spread and the parity long collars as well, because a standard collar is a parity trade to a bull put credit spread and a bull call debit spread. So you'll be able to compare those a little bit easier in the near future. All right. Do we have any other questions? I think I've gotten everything that's come in so far. Uh-oh, here's a good one. <laughs> Okay, Joseph, I do have the time. Um, I don't know what is the best way to, to do this or how to explain it. Doing low price naked options, it seems like you would have to do a bunch, several contracts, 50 or so, to make a significant gain. That is why I stick to options over $1. I'm assuming you mean the natural bid price to over a dollar. 
Well, that, that's one way to approach it. Um, in my mind, it's uh, when I look at a position, a covered call or a naked put, the first thing I'm focused on personally is the percentage naked yield on a naked put, for example, or the percentage return if assigned and the percentage unchanged for a covered call trade. Okay, I look at the percentage game. That's more important to me. But you're right, and I have I I suffer with this on a daily day because a lot of times a daily day. I actually said that. How funny is that? You tell it's Friday. I start stumbling. <laughs> if I'm looking at a covered call position that's offering me a three or four percent return, but it's on a four or five dollar stock, meaning I'm uh, collecting maybe fifteen cents, I. You're absolutely right. I have to do maybe at least a thousand shares of that stock just to be able to pay for the commission fees in some cases. You know, maybe not even a thousand shares. Maybe I only have to do 500 shares. But the commission fee I'm paying, especially if I'm using a broker that takes out, let's say, $15 per stock and $15 per contract, or they don't allow you to enter a covered call as one transaction, those commissions are really going to destroy my potential return. Um, the thing that I'm afraid of, I don't want to say I'm afraid of, but the thing I might be a little bit concerned of, Joseph, is that just because an option has a bid price of a dollar, naturally that doesn't mean that it's one you should trade. If I'm looking at a $12, and you know this, I, I know you, you know this, I'm just kind of relating this to everyone else, but if I'm looking at a $12 stock and I can sell the twelve fifty call for a dollar, that almost looks too good to be true, and naturally, right away, a bell is going off in my head. Something is wrong with this position. Now, I know you were probably talking more about uh, fifty strike put. Uh, um, sorry, fifty dollars stocks or forty dollars stocks, for example. Um, but you know, sometimes you see those low ones. Uh, you can really get affected by it. Let me just take a look here. Let's go into the naked put screen again. I'm going to go into the search tool here. I'm going to adjust this criteria. Um, I'm going to leave it. I'm going to adjust it. I'm only going to go 5% out of the money. Okay, just lower that down a little bit. But I'm going to restrict the option bid price to be at least a dollar. I'm going to leave the other criterion just to see what we get. Let's see how many match our criteria. Good, good amount, good amount. Let me see what sticks out in my mind right away. Well, the first one kind of does. Hmm, that's actually not too bad. That's actually not too bad. Okay. Well, I was looking at the first one, Simple Tech. It stuck out in my mind because uh, this stock's been on a was on a decent run recently. I think it's pulled back from where it was. Let me take a look at the stock chart. I always have to bring the stock up. This is one of my uh, lack of a better term. This is one of my ex girlfriends that I don't remember fondly. Um, uh, what I mean by that is there are a lot of pundits out there who, when you say the uh, the um, I'm sorry, a lot of jokes we have out there is that a lot of pundits who, who say, oh, the market's doing this, the market's doing that. When they're wrong, they're never wrong. We just say, uh, you know, we were early, okay? So what I mean by that is that I was really early on this stock. Um, I remember talking to Ernie about this stock. I really liked it when it was down here. I think it was right about in this time frame. It was trading around five fifty, six dollars $6 per share. I saw it pop a little bit. Um, I think I still had shares at this time at around the $10 range. I think I was trading it when it was around 12 I, I didn't get in at this lower price. That's when I started watching it. Popped up here. I got in at about 12 and then it just sort of stagnated. Um, actually, you know what? I apologize. This is the right chart. This is the wrong time frame. Let me go back. Let me really go back. Let me go two years. There it is. That's what I was looking for. I apologize. This is the two-year chart. I got into STEC uh, somewhere in this range, somewhere over here. <laughs> I managed it. I, I watched it fall. I bought some puts. I adjusted my calls. I did some things. But after several months and the stock was stagnating down here, I got out of it for a small loss. Um, I think I lost maybe about 2% on the whole position after constantly rolling, making adjustments. I originally remember I got in at around $11 or $12. When it dropped down to here and then it just stagnated, I got out of it. I wasn't trading radioactively at this time. This would have been a perfect stock to trade radioactively at this time. Well, what did this little guy do? This guy went all the way up here. Now this guy is all the way down here again. Okay, <laughs> It's a fun little stock to watch here. Um, but yes, I got out of this and someone called Ernie uh, a few months ago over the summer 
and was telling him how much money they've made on Stack, and I just kind of laughed hearing the conversation, and I didn't know what he meant because I hadn't looked at this stock since I got out of it. You know, you don't want to call the ex-girlfriend or look her up or anything every time, and there you go. Stock's trading up near $30, and I had it at 12 I had my cost basis down to $8 at one, part, and one point, and I just didn't hold on because it didn't look like it was doing anything for me. And there it is trading at 30 right, the ones that got away. Okay, so let's close that down there. But that's why I said that this one sticks out in my mind. This is a pretty good naked yield. It's, it's higher than what I might normally expect to see. It's 4.7%, but there's your bid of $1. Um, but you've seen the roller coaster ride this stock has been on. And, of course, because of that roller coaster ride, the implied volatility, that's not that bad. It's at 0.68, which I checked earlier today. That's right at the average of all optionable stocks in the market right now. The average implied volatility, or it was at uh, 2.30 this afternoon, was at 0.68 or 68%. So this is on par with that. Um, but uh, yeah, that's, um, you, can, you can create the screen uh, to find specifically what you want. Um, I would just you know, always remind you if, you, if you want to look just for the dollar, that's great. Just be wary when you start seeing the naked put yields or the naked call yields that are at uh, 8%, 9%, 10%. <laughs> that might come back to haunt you. But you know that. I know your experience trading these positions. Okay. Um, I got a question coming. One of my mentors does stock with deep in the money short calls. Um, thoughts? Well, I wanted, uh, I need a little bit more background. You mean they're just doing covered calls using deep in the money calls? Um, that's considered a conservative strategy, but you have to remember that you're still at risk. Um, are they just if I hope they're not just trading deep in the money short calls that's 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 pretty risky there I don't like that trade unless you're extremely bearish even then I still don't like that trade so I'm assuming you're talking about deep in the money covered calls Joseph um, yeah I mean that's what Ernie was trading um, for the longest time before he got together with Kurt Frankenberg Ernie was a an avid and experienced covered call trader he'd been trading covered calls for 15 or 20 years Ernie by the way of course is the president and founder of power options and he created he'd been trading covered calls for years when he retired from Hewlett Packard that's when he created these suite of tools to essentially just trade his own account um, but he was doing covered calls that was his favorite method of uh, trading uh, for years and before I got together with Kurt I was um, before you know we started working with Kurt Frankenberg I was doing covered calls as well but I was doing them more aggressive I was doing out of the money calls okay and let's take just a look at a comparison we'll use simple tech again and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the option chain, and we're going to look at the comparison of the November in the money, at the money, and out of the money calls right now for STEC. This is not a recommendation or suggestion to do any one of these calls in these stocks. You and I just looked at the stock chart. We saw how it's moved quickly up to almost 40, and now it's all the way back down to 24. Okay? So here we are in the option chain for STEC, for STEC. Okay? And we see here that the... Uh, we have our natural listing, as you'd see, on most other chains. You have your bid price. Okay, that's great. And you have your ask price and some other information. But what's really important, what's really powerful about the power options chain here is that for covered call traders and for naked put traders, when we look at the put screen, we show you the return fields if we traded this as a covered call. So right now, if I bought Stack at 24.18 and sold the 25 call, okay, my downside protection as a covered call would be 5.6%. The return, if unchanged, if the stock stays at the same price, 24.18 would be 5.9%, and my percentage, if assigned, would be 9.5%. Okay? So, what are we really looking at here? Well, what we're looking at is the at the money call. This is what I started doing, by the way, when I first started trading uh, covered calls. When I first started working with Ernie and Greg, I was just doing the basic covered call trade, but I always tried to do the at to slightly out of the money trade. I was still bullish on the market. I was trading oil, gold, and silver stocks. Um, those were the stocks that I, I thought I knew. And the reason why is because, you know, when I started in college, I was going for uh, geology and paleontology. So I knew things about mining, and I knew about certain companies uh, in the area and different areas around uh, the Midwest, for example. In any case, the at the money call here, the 25, Really, the 24 is at the money, but the slightly out of the money covered call here, we have a 5.6% downside protection. That means the stock can drop 5.6% before we're technically losing money on the position. Okay? At the same time, 
if the stock is assigned, meaning if the stock goes above 25 by November expiration, we'll have our stock called away, and this would result in a 9.5% if assigned. But what's also important to realize is that over here on the right is our probability above. This is the theoretical probability that the stock will be trading above our strike price at expiration. We only have about a 43% chance that that would happen. Okay? Now, as we go deeper in the money, let's take a look just at the at the money now. If we sold the 24 call, we bought stack at 24.18, sold the 24 call for $1.80. This would give us a downside protection of 7.4% and a potential return if assigned of 7.2%. Why is the percent unchanged the same as the percent if assigned? Well, we're already in the money. Okay, the stock's at 24.18. We're going to sell the 24 call. We're already slightly in the money there, so the percent if unchanged equals the percent if assigned. If stock stays at 2418, we'll still get assigned. Okay? And then we have a 51.6% chance of getting that return. Now as we go deeper in the money, let's go all the way down to the 21 strike. Buy the stock at 2418, sell the stock at 21, and collect $3.70 in premium. Okay? That increases our downside protection. The stock can now drop 15.3% or $3.70 before we're losing money on the position. So this gives us a halfway decent protection level on the stock. Okay? But the stock's already deep in the money. And if the stock stays above our strike price of 21, because we're giving up some profit from the current price to the strike price, we will only make 2.5%. And we do have a 77.7% .7 chance of getting that return. Okay? So what I want to look at here is if this is my goal, if I like this stock and I'm comfortable making a 2.5% return in 29 days, if that matches my overall goals and you know my normal position having a 77% probability matches what I normally look for, this might be a trade I would like. When you go deeper in the money, you get a higher downside protection, but you have a potentially lower percent if assigned and a higher percent if assigned of getting that return. Now what we just saw with the STEC chart, um, STEC chart, it's on a roller coaster down. And the one thing I want to remember, let's remind everyone, I'm sorry, let's just go to that, um, oh I can't do it from here. But if we go back into the custom spread tool, S-Q-R-K-N, hold on one second. Twenty four eighteen. Let me just write this down real quick. Okay, I'm going to enter this manually into the custom spread tool. You can't link to the profit and loss chart from the chain yet, but you might be able to soon. Okay, so I'm going to enter this into the position. Let's say we bought a thousand shares of stack at twenty four eighteen. I'm going to reiterate this. This is not a recommendation to buy this stock. This is just an example. <laughs> you all have heard my previous history on this stock and why I might I probably am not going to buy into it ever again. But okay, there's our option symbol. Remember I clicked on it from the chain so it automatically populated in my next block. I'm going to go ahead and sell that. Ten contracts. I'm going to use that natural bid price again of 370. Okay. All right, let's take a look at our covered call chart. We know what this is going to look like. But I just want to remind everyone, this is with a thousand shares. I could have done it with a hundred. But just remind everyone, we still essentially have a 100% maximum risk. This kind of stock that's been falling, we looked at the stock chart, it's been falling huge percentages over the past couple weeks. So if this stock continues down, remember, you still have a lot of risk on this position. Yes, you have a 15.3% downside. The stock needs to drop 15% um, before you lose money on the deep in the money trade. But the key to remember is that it still can. Now a lot of stocks, this is much more difficult to do. STEC, remember we talked briefly about the implied volatility for example, um, how it has a higher implied volatility because the stock has been dropping um, and that's what inflates the price. But let's do the same thing. Let's go back to the option chain for something uh, less volatile. Let's use IBM. Okay? Um, I know I'm going all over the place with your question Joseph, but I just wanted to show you the comparisons. Um, Short answer is that it is a good strategy. It's considered a conservative strategy. You just have to make sure you find positions in the money covered calls that match your criteria, match your return and your risk. But just remember, if they go against you, they can go against you quickly. You might be ending, end up holding a uh, stock with a deep loss. Remember, we are looking at the position uh, for STEC, and when IBM's right at 120, 
we're looking at the 124, I'm sorry, we're looking at stack. The stock was at about 24. The just in the money, $24.18, I'm sorry, the $24 strike was trading. Um, we basically, with the at the money call on stack, we could have made, I believe, a 7.2% downside protection. And if we were assigned, a 7.2% return if assigned. IBM much less volatile, only has a volatility of around 19% compared to 68% for that first position we were looking at. Okay, but what do we get here? With IBM, if we sold the at the money call, we only have a 2.2% downside protection with the potential of making a 2% return if we're assigned. Okay, does that match your risk reward tolerance? Hey, if it does, this might be a trade you might want to do. But notice what happens when I go deeper in the money. On a less volatile stock like IBM, I go down to the 110 strike, which is about 10 points in the money, 10% in the money. Sure, I can get an 8.7% downside protection if I sell the call, but only a 0.1% potential return if assigned. And what's my probability of getting assigned? 95%. So I've got a 95% chance on this low volatile stock of making 0.1% on my investment. <laughs> This is just a shorter way, of a longer way, I should say, of illustrating that in the money covered calls are conservative, are considered a conservative trade, but there is a downfall to them. And remember that in the money covered calls can work as a sorting machine. What do I mean by that? Well, let's say that we did have a couple in the money covered calls. We entered five or six trades of five or six in the money covered calls where we were averaging about a three to three and a half percent return if we're assigned on each one we had about a 5% downside protection on each one as well. And let's say on those positions, those five positions that had that makeup of a, uh, let's say, 3% return, 5% downside, um, let's say on each one we are using a 10% stop loss. Okay, So we are going to recommend to liquidate the position if the stock dropped 10%. Well, let's say four of them go up just as we wanted. We get assigned and make 3%. Okay, and we can average that out. Let's say that was a 12% gain. Okay, but the fourth one has an early earnings warning announcement or some kind of boardroom scandal comes out, and in the aftermarket hours, the stock drops, let's say, 15 to 20%. Well, unfortunately, in that case, your 10% stop loss did not work. It got violated in the after hours. You actually take, a, you take your 20% loss on that position. You made 12%. On your other four positions, maybe even 15 if we include the 3% premium we gained on the fifth trade, but we lost 20% on the one that fell, and so now that's stuck in our account. Eventually, the option would expire worthless. Now we have to keep rolling it to management. That's what a lot of investors see sometimes. Uh, I'm sorry, a lot of investors see with the covered call positions. We cap our upside gains, and we get assigned, and on the positions that drop, we end up still holding them, trying to repair them. So in the money covered calls can work as a sorting machine where the winners get called away from you for a small gain and you don't take advantage of any of the further upside potential, but the losers end up staying in your account and you might be holding on to them for a long time trying to repair it to get back to break even. So they're good positions to use, the in the money covered calls, but they do have a dark side to them. And uh, any of you who have joined myself, Kurt Frankenberg, um, or Ernie for other, any of the other radioactive training presentations, you've probably heard us say that so much that uh, you know it by heart now <laughs> and the different examples. What I would never do is, uh, I mentioned this in most of my webinars, by the way, is the positions that I never trade, the three positions I never trade is I never trade short straddles, I never trade short strangles, and I never trade naked calls too much risk for my tolerance. If I, I see how short strangles can be profitable, but if I'm thinking about doing a short strangle, I'm just going to do an iron condor. I'm going to limit my risk instead of selling two short options that aren't covered. I'm going to buy a further out of the money put and a further out of the money call to lock in my, my risk there. But the naked calls, selling calls without owning stock or having any protection in place, Short straddles and short strangles are the three trades I will, three options, positions I know I will never trade. All right, folks. Do we have any other questions? I don't see any others. I think I've answered everyone that's come through so far. Okay. 
Well, I'm going to still leave this open for a few minutes. Um, if you think of another question you want answered, go ahead and send it my way. What I'm going to do now is go back to that uh, slideshow there. I'm just going to review some of the slides, um, the closing slides, I should say. Um, I just want to remind everyone about the Power Option subscription. Uh, the 20-minute delayed service is $59.95 per month, um, or there's a discounted rate of $600 for the year, so you're essentially paying for 10 months but getting 12 months of service. The real time is $79.90 per month, or $800 for the year. Now, those two uh, subscription services do not include the historical data. That's an additional cost on top of the 20-minute delayed or the real time. That would be $99.95 for three months access to the historical suite of tools. But if you're already getting the real time or considering getting the real time, it's just easier to upgrade to the professional level of service. That doesn't mean you have to be a professional trader, an advisor, or um, a financial advisor, for example. It's just our professional level of service, about $100 per month or a discounted rate of $1,000 per year. It includes everything on the real-time service, um, but with the historical, uh, historical suite of tools, excuse me, included in that automatically. Okay, so it's actually cheaper to go from real time to $99.99, it's $20 extra per month, instead of going paying for the three-month subscription to the historical, which would be an extra $30 per month. I always forget to change this, and I do severely apologize. Um, <laughs> I thought I had changed this last week, and I guess I didn't. I'm going to X out the date. Here is our schedule for all of the upcoming presentations. We do several webinars each week. They are completely free. Please feel free to join us. So next week week, Tuesday, October 27th, okay, 14 days after I had written here, but the 27th, 12 p.m. Eastern, an introduction to radioactive trading. Um, this is where Kurt and I uh, pick up where the sketch, that's his nine-page white paper that discusses his protective method, um, as we do there. And at 9 p.m. Eastern, I always host a hour presentation on power options, using those power options tools for those who are using the radioactive trading method, using Kurt's method. Um, Wednesday, October 28th, let's just add 14 days here, let's see the 28th there, um, 12 p.m. Eastern, I just host a basic introduction to Power Options tools, I sort of just walk through how I would find a trade in a particular strategy, what I would use the more information menu to further research and analyze my positions, then link from that to the different research and analysis, compare it as we did a little while ago to the parity trade perhaps, and then go ahead and uh, link the position to my portfolio and then how to use the portfolio to continue paper trading and tracking those positions. Thursday, October 29th, what we're going to have is at 12 p.m. Eastern we do another introduction to radioactive trading presentation. Um, also at 6 p.m., I can't believe I didn't change this slide, at 6 p.m. on Thursday the 29th, um, we're not doing collar spreads part two, What's going to happen? It's going to be part two of our discussion on vertical spreads. Last night we, in, we did a presentation on the four vertical spreads, an introduction to the bull put credits, bear call credits, bull call debits, bear put debits. And at 6 p.m. Eastern time on Thursday of next week, we're going to review the management. Part two is going to revolve around the management techniques. Okay. And then, of course, on Friday, October 30th, Mischief Night pre-Halloween evening, we're going to have a very spooky open discussion again at 4.15 Eastern Time, 4.30 Eastern Time again, okay? Let me erase those drawings. I apologize there. And uh, that's what's upcoming next week. Um, so uh, thank you guys for joining us. Um, I appreciate it. Um, I hope you have a great weekend. We look forward to seeing you next week at the other webinars that we're going to be hosting. Remember, if you have any questions at any time, just feel free to give us a call or send us an email. You can email us to support at poweropt, that's poweropt.com, um, or give us a call at our toll-free number during market hours. All right. Have a good night, everyone, and a great weekend, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.